Welcome, my name is Marie, and it is the second quarter of the Teens Cornerstone Connection Lesson of 2023. For lesson two, we have Baraka on the mission stories. The orchestra, we have Lee and Gorge on the saxophone, Sakai on the trumpet, Suvira on the clarinet, Amy and myself on the violins. Lastly, we have the Sabbath School panel, which is done by the Nairobi Central Teens, along with their teen teachers. Enjoy! Happy Sabbath, viewers. My name is Baraka, and I'll be taking us through the second mission story for this quarter. Um, like the previous one, this mission story will be coming from the country of Romania. And I'll start off by giving out some interesting facts about the country. The modern jet engine was invented by a Romanian man by the name Henry Coanda in the 1950s. Romania is, is known to be the most geographically, one of the most geographically diverse countries in Europe. And the Adventist message was first preached in Romania in 1869 by Michael Berlin. Ten-year-old Catalin wasn't very excited about visiting Mrs. Marinella. Mrs. Marinella and Catalin's mom would regularly have Bible study together. However, Catalin was not interested at all in the Bible study. Like most of us, he, probably, he only went for the food. Mrs. Marinella would often make Saravina, which is a kind of Romanian pastry with cream and a cherry on top. He really enjoyed this cake, but he had zero interest in the Bible study. However, one day something changed. As he was eating the cake while listening to the Bible study, he overheard Miss Marinella reading from Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, which says... Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. At first, this made no sense at all to Catalin, but the more he listened, the more he began to understand that Saturday was not just any day. It was an important day of the week. Soon enough, his behavior began to change as he stopped doing homework on Saturday. He would postpone his chores to the next day, and he began to read the Bible for himself to find out more and more about why Saturday is an important day. He found, he discovered his new favorite verse that was Daniel 12, verse 3, which says, in this, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. From what he understood from this verse, the more you bring people to God, you'll shine like stars forever which motivated him to invite more and more of his friends for the Bible study and ultimately to church. Um, the 13th Sabbath offering, a portion of it will go to, to building an after-school center for children like Catalin, where they can learn about God and read the Bible and get to know Jesus better.
Sons and daughters of the Most High, I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ and happy Sabbath. Happy day. Um, we'd like to invite you or rather to welcome you on this uh, lesson two, second lesson for this quarter entitled, Can You Do It? But first, before we proceed, I'd like us to introduce the panel. My name is Migok Misao. My name is Grace Washeke. I am Salmon Sipakati. My name is Bendithian Silas. And I am Jonan Magana. Thank you so much. Uh, Grace will be happy to pray for us. Okay, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. <clears throat> our kind and loving Father, thank you so much for taking care of us and for enabling us to see another Sabbath. And right now, as we prepare to dig deep into your word, may you be our guide hearts and help us to understand everything that you're trying to tell us today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, happy Sabbath, everyone, once again. Happy day. Yeah, so we'd like to get into a lesson for today. But before we get into that, um, we'd like to connect it to the previous lesson we did. So this is lesson two in our quarter. And last Sabbath, we studied about Joseph. You know, life is hard work how he worked so hard to get to his position in the Egyptian government. Now, today is a story about reunion. So remember Joseph, he got to Egypt because he was sold by his brothers. So in this lesson today, we see him reconnecting with his brothers. But before that, let me just give a brief story, okay? It was Sunday, uh, January 8th, 1956. So we have five young missionaries. They flew into the Amazon jungle to go and minister to the natives in Amazon, one of the Indian tribes. Their names were Jim, Nate, Ed, Peter, and Roger. Now these five young people went to Amazon. That was on a Sunday. Now the next day, on Monday, their five bodies were found floating on a river in the Amazon. These were the five young missionaries. They had been killed by those Indians they had gone to minister to. Now, go back to the United States, where the young missionaries came from. And one of them, their father, was called Dr. Macaulay. He was so heartbroken by the death of his son. But in his, in his heartbreak, he said, Lord, I just pray for the day that I will see these young people who murdered my son be transformed by your love so that I can just wrap my arms around them and just tell them God loves you. That's, it takes a lot of effort to say that. Now, three years after that death, uh, a sister to one of the missionaries and a widow to one of the missionaries decided to do a mission to the same place where the relatives were killed. So they went there, and this time they were successful. They managed to convert so many people. And then some of the Indians who were converted actually baptized the sons belonging to one of the missionaries they had been killed before. And one of the sons who was baptized, his name was um, Jonathan, right? So Jonathan was called back again by the same Indians about 40 years later to help them establish the first church there. Now the question that reigns in our lesson today is, could you do it? Could you forgive someone who killed someone that you loved? Now our story today doesn't really have much to do with murder, more like attempted murder. So we're going to see what really happened to Joseph. What is this that he dared to do? And that we asked, could we do it? Silas, what do you think about this? Could you take us to some of your thoughts on this? I don't mind. Mm -hmm. So we can go through the what do you think section. And before we start it, I'd ask Salmon to please read for us. The book of Romans. Romans twelve seventeen. Repay no one for repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. Okay, so I'll read Matthew five verse seven and it says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Mm -hmm. So in this lesson we asked what do you think, like, what would you like to change in your 
brother or sister or best friend. And we are asked to list five things which we would like to change and six things we like. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'd like to change my brother's temper. Why? Why his temper? <laughs> he because he likes, gets angry quickly. Yeah, so I'd like to change his temper. Is yeah. there something you like about him, though? Because oh, I'm sure there are like two things you might like about him. Okay, his creativity and also how fast he thinks. Oh, interesting, interesting. Well, you can get uh, some thoughts from someone else. You can choose someone. Okay, so, Chami Gok, what do you think? Interesting question. Uh, from my side, I think um, what I like about my brother, I have so many brothers, but I'll just, uh, I won't point the name. Um is um he's gifted in teaching the word of god and expounding on it and also um his diligence in prayer when he says that he wants to pray for a certain time he's very disciplined and commits himself into prayer maybe um an area of improvement that i've seen will be the aspect of uh, being willing to be taught and also to be shown the direction you know sometimes somebody might be stubborn but um, I think, and I guess that's part of nature and life. So that's the area that I think um, will require some improvement. Okay, okay. Thank you for those insights, Silas and Shami Gok. Now we'd like to get into our story. But uh, before we get into that, and uh, Salmon is going to take us right. So our story is about forgiveness, basically. That's the theme, the recurring theme. If you're to get away with something in this lesson today is the theme of forgiveness. And we are told that we cannot love our enemies. Let me just surprise you guys. You know, you cannot love your enemies. I know, right? But it's only through Christ's love living in us that we're able to do that. So, Amen. like, it's totally impossible. It is possible, but only with Christ. Amen. All right. So, Salmon, tell us, what, what is our story about today? Okay. So... Our story is from Genesis 45. And here is Joseph sitting at his seat, very supreme high. And his brothers, they can as well be regarded as his enemies. So he orders everyone to get out except from his brothers who have no idea what is happening and do not know that standing before them is their long lost brother. So Joseph discloses the secret and says, I am your brother, the one you sold into slavery. So his brothers are frightened. They know they're going to die. From everything we interact with, from movies to TV shows, people are mistreated, but they come up, they rise, and they get revenge to those who mistreated them. So Joseph is at this place, but what does he decide to do? He forgives them. Amen, amen. Mm -hmm. So he asks them if his father is alive, but they're still speechless, really. It's not normal. They know they're going to die. So he comforts them. They weep together. And they say that their father is alive. And so soon after, the news goes to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh tells them to bring their father to the land of Egypt. He'll give them the best of the land. Because if it weren't for Joseph, they wouldn't have been that best of that land. They wouldn't have utilized it. So Pharaoh decides to give the fever back. So Joseph's brothers go with chariots and they go to Jacob. So they tell Jacob that, they are, that Joseph is alive, but Jacob is in disbelief. But after seeing all the chariots, okay, it's true. There's no way his sons acquired all those chariots. Definitely. Yeah, so he accepts. And mm -hmm. 
he goes back to he goes to Egypt to see his long lost son before he dies. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Solomon, for that. And we also get a very interesting insight from the same lesson. Uh, Chamigok, probably you can uh, take us through that. We have some uh, some very interesting uh, fact or something to think about in the Did You Know section of our lesson. Do you mind us? Uh, do you mind reading through that? Yes, uh, indeed. Um, what you are learning here first is um, the Bible says something very interesting about Jacob, that he loved Joseph more than the sons. No wonder he got upset. Uh, with the children um, at that time. Um, Joseph was also in slavery for about 10 years, and um, still he forgave his brothers. The question is, would you forgive somebody who has hurt you that much? So for 10 years, you can imagine how um, Joseph was feeling. Um, slavery was a common practice in the, in, the, in, in the ancient times, and it was possible to put yourself into slavery if you owed too many people too much money. After Joseph working on Pharaoh's uh, behalf, um, he had taken all the money that um, the Egyptians had and all the wealth. He had acquired all the livestock over a period of time. And I guess this is what made him to acquire a lot of power over a period of time because of the wisdom and the intelligence that he had. Amen. True that. And uh, from the previous lesson, we learned that it was during the time of drought. And the Egyptians had spent all their money during the seven years of drought. And uh, they spent all their money buying the grain. Once they ran out of money, what Joseph did, something very wise, he took their land mm -hmm. in return for giving them food. Mm -hmm. And that's how later on in the long run, the pharaohs owned almost all of the land in Egypt. So that was thanks to Joseph. Yeah, right? indeed. Uh, thank you for that, Shemigok. Salmon, there's some questions you can get from this lesson. Do you mind just reading us through some of the questions? Yeah, so how much is too much to forgive? How much is too much? The Bible says 70 times 7. Mm -hmm. How much is too much? Would you forgive someone who's wronging you every time, every time, now and then, mm. a minute and a minute? Would you mind answering this question? <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting thing to think about because uh, when a culture where I call it the cut-off culture. Or if someone wrongs you, you cut them off. You delete their number. You don't talk to them again. And we don't really have the heart of forgiveness in us anymore. But as we had said before, it is not easy to forgive people, let alone someone who wrongs you every single day and you see them. But Christ calls for us to love and forgive. Okay? There is a verse that um, in first... In Philippians, yes, Philippians 4, verse 12 and 13, you know, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. All things includes even forgiveness. It's a hard thing to do, but with Christ, it's, we are able to forgive people. So nothing is Amen. too much to forgive. Okay, so... Amen. Why did... Why did Jacob love Benjamin and Joseph more than his other sons, Shemigok? Um, just from the facts that I had mentioned earlier, we are told that um, uh, Jacob loved uh, Joseph. Um, at that time, he was the favorite before he was sold off to um, the Egyptians. But we also see in the previous stories and the previous uh, lessons that we've learned that uh, Jacob also loved um, Rachel right, more than Leah. So perhaps um, we may also conclude safely that the reason why Jacob loved uh, Joseph and Benjamin was it because they were offsprings directly from uh, Rachel, who was the uh, most loved by Jacob. I think to me, Gok, that brings in the aspect of favorism. Yes. You know, I think parents can also divide their children unknowingly, you know, yeah. just showing love to their favorite child. Yeah. But they, they don't know how much they're damaging the family in the long run. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that affects them um, in the sense that um, when growing up, uh, you will want to compensate as a son, as a child. You will want to do much more so that you can be able to be loved just like the other person is being loved. But again, if your efforts have not been recognized by your parents, it's most likely that when you grow up, you'll feel like there's some certain emptiness that you're having of affirmation that your parent never gave you. And so if you get this affirmation from somebody else, then it's most likely that you'll be influenced by the outside world as opposed to 
being influenced Family. positively with their parents mm. because they are, the, they are the first center of instructions or instructor to your life. Right. So I think that's an encouragement to all of us that just in case you're out there and you're offering favoritism to one child or the other, even teachers, for example, mm -hmm. let's consider to be fair and just, just like Jesus Christ Amen. was fair and just. Amen. Yes, Salman. Okay, so I have a few more. And so here's one. Would you want to exact revenge on the people who harmed you once you had power? I think Chris can give us a thought on that, all right? Hey, honestly, for me, I'm like a, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I'm like a peace-loving kind of person because I know if I exact revenge on these people, they're going to make my, you know, my reign more complicated than it already is. So I think I'd rather just sit it out. And uh, just, just to interject again, Forgiveness is a very interesting thing because it heals the person who's forgiving more than the person who's being forgiven. You know, when you have a grudge in your heart, you're the one who's actually hurting more than the person who you're holding the grudge against. So by forgiving, you're actually relieving yourself. You're doing yourself a favor. Yeah, and I, I don't know why it's hard for us to just, for once, you know, just do ourselves a favor and forgive people. It doesn't harm to forgive, right? Maybe just to add on that as well, Teacher Jonan, um, I read somewhere that um, a statement that caught my eye um, that um, when you forgive, you live a better life. Mm, true. But true. when you do not forgive, you live a bitter life. Mm. But it's upon us to choose. And that choice is born by you. Choose to forgive. When you mm. forgive, you live a better life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I, I like that quote. I like that quote. You just write it down somewhere, probably just send it to the audience somewhere, right? Uh, the, you can, there's one more question in the, in the Sunday part. Salmon, you can probably just give your insights on that. You know, uh, do you think you could be so forgiving of people who have done horrible things to you? And uh, do you have the ability to forgive those around you for the little things they do to you? And where does this ability to forgive come from? Okay. The first one is a bit complicated because this person keeps on wronging you, even if it's a little thing, it's growing. You've forgiven him, but he still brings it up. You're supposed to forgive and forget. You've forgotten it, but he's still bringing it back to you. It's becoming an issue. That's when you cut, you cut, you cut him off. <laughs> okay, okay. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. um, just to try and uh, help in refining that point, mm -hmm. uh, you, you see when you say you're cutting that person off, it looks like um, you still have that grudge. Perhaps, perhaps you can consider to create a boundary because sometimes somebody can cause you to sin just because of what they're still doing. Mm. So creating boundaries also will help. Imaginary boundaries. Mm. So that somebody can know that this is how far you can go or this is how far you can take. Perhaps mm. that can help in terms of how we can relate or manage our relationship with other people. Yes, true. And uh, also that can also add to the question again. Probably someone can also give us your insight. You know, like where does the ability to forgive people come from? Is it, um, do we have the ability in ourselves we can just start forgiving people right now? Or do we have an, another power, a higher power that helps us to forgive? It's quite obvious that the power of forgiveness comes from God. Mm. Amen. Also, yeah. um, you know, forgiveness is, an, <coughs> is a divine act, all right? It's also salvational. Remember when Jesus Christ was at the cross, in as much as he was persecuted, he still said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they were doing. doing. Yeah. So, agreeing with what um, Salmon is saying, that it stems from God's power. We can only do this through the power of who? Of, of Jesus God. Christ. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And now before we continue with our lesson, uh, we can get a brief uh, music interlude from the orchestra.
Welcome back to a lesson. Now we'll move on to the next section where we'll have uh, Silas read for us our key text. Silas? Okay, I'll read the, the key text of our lesson, which is from the book Genesis chapter 45, verse 4 and 5. And it says, Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. Amen. Amen. Well, tell us what you get from that and probably some questions that might arise from the key text. Okay, so, like, Joseph had finally accepted that it, they didn't, him being sold to Egypt wasn't only for their brothers getting rid of him, but it was also to help other people and save people's lives. Yeah, so I have a question here. What does it tell us about Joseph's belief in God's plan for his life? I, may I answer? Okay, fine. I believe it shows that Joseph believed in God's plan for his life because God doesn't promise that you know, our lives, since we believe in him, are going to be like smooth. He tells us that they're going to be rocks and ruts along the way. But Joseph trusted in the process, even though he was sold to slavery and then accused falsely by part of his wife, then thrown to jail. He still believed that God had a plan for him and he was able to see that materialize. Amen. Amen. That's a good point. So the next question, what does it tell us about his brother's sense of guilt. Shall we go? Um, I think what I'm learning from their brothers is an aspect of uh, humility. Realizing that they made a mistake. Realizing that um, a sense of regret. All right? And so for me, what I'm picking from them is even when we do something wrong, let us be willing to stoop low, to accept that you've done something wrong and have the attitude to reconcile. And I think that is what I saw from the brothers. They were willing to reconcile. They were willing to, they had accepted that they had done um, some wrong. And so when we fall guilty, even when you're going against God or even against somebody, make the first step and come and say, I'm sorry, or please forgive me. And then you open that door to reconcile. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Silas, Grace, and Shemigok. Uh, also, we can uh, read through this very um, deep quote by Ellen White from uh, the book Patriots and Prophets in the Flashlight. I'd like Grace to read that for us. Okay. So this quote comes, as you've heard, from Patriots and Prophets, page 230. Joseph was satisfied. He had seen in his brothers the fruit of true repentance. <coughs> Upon hearing Judah's noble offer, he gave orders that all but these men should withdraw. Then, weeping aloud, he cried, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? His brothers stood motionless, dumb with fear and amazement. All their ill treatment of him passed before them. So here we see that he had seen in his brothers the fruits of true repentance. So how did he do that? Well, I think we all know the story of how when the brothers came to Egypt, he first accused them of being spies, then put the money back in their bags, then invited them for a feast, told them to bring Benjamin along with them next time and all that. He was actually testing them in all that they were doing. Like in the instance of telling them that they're spies and asking about Benjamin and all that stuff, he wanted to know whether they were still as heartless as they were with, hi with him because... Benjamin was their favorite, was Joseph, uh, not Joseph, sorry, Jacob's favorite son, and they wanted to know whether they held him in contempt and in, like, and envied him the same way they did to Joseph. So he brought about all that spy business so that he could know that, and they saw that they actually don't feel jealous of him at all. And this even materialized more because we, we can see that if we are to... Flash to fast forward a little bit. 
that when they went for the feast, you know, when they came back the second time, Benjamin was given like more food than the rest. True. Mm-hmm. But they didn't see them like, he didn't see them like holding him in contempt or anything like that. And then the final test, you can see that when Joseph's silver cup was found in Benjamin's sack, Judah offered to stay behind and be Joseph's slave, but to let Benjamin go home so that their father does not suffer any more heartbreak than he already had. So this is what convinced Joseph that their hearts had truly changed. Their mm-hmm. at first selfish hearts had become selfless and they cared about their father and they weren't jealous of anyone anymore. So this is what now made Joseph comfortable to reveal who he truly was to his brothers. Amen. Amen. I, I like that insight. And uh, Ellen White also talks about how Joseph just did all this out of the love he had for his family and his father. Joseph missed his family. He hadn't seen them for so many years and he really wanted, you know, he extended the olive branch to his brothers, wanting them to be whole again. And that's why he really wanted his father, Jacob, and the rest of the family to come and join him in Egypt, as you see he later does. Thank you for that, Grace. Uh, maybe go, can, yes, uh, uh, maybe uh, just to chip in, it's also important for us to note, dear viewers, that even in God's kingdom, God moves fast. God does not tell us to forgive others before he does it. The reason why he tells you to forgive is because he forgave us. He first forgave us. We love him because he first loved us. So before, um, when, when, for example, you are a child of God, you are a believer, you are a Christian, and somebody harms you, be the first one to make the first move. Because you know what? Even in the Garden of Eden, the, person, the first person to make the first move was actually God. Yes, he had to go and look for Adam and Eve. Yet it was Adam and Eve who had wronged God. And so it's a learning that we need to take that... Um, it, in, 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 in the process of reconciliation, in the process of forgiveness, it is God's people, it's the believer to make the first move towards forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that insight. Uh, so we'll uh, move to the next part of our lesson, right? So we have a section in our lessons. If you have, you can just flip to it. The punchlines. Okay, just like everyone just flip to the punchlines. We're going to get some bit of uh, some questions from you guys. Okay. So when you look at those verses in the punchlines, all right, you just think deeply about them, okay? Now, out of all those verses, which verse do you most wish you could share with that? That one person always annoys you. you know, there's always that one person in life. You can't tell me that you don't have an enemy. Every, everyone has. There's always that one person, okay? So which verse would you most wish you could share with someone whose actions annoy you? Jimmy Gok. All right. Um, I think for me, what I picked the most was Romans 12, verse 17, <laughs> which was earlier mentioned, or uh, we read it, do not repay. So for me, repaying evil for evil is something that I'd like to really always talk about uh, whenever I see somebody who has annoyed me, to remind them that it is not a must to give a negative response to it. When you do it positively, like there Joseph did, by m- making the first move to forgive, then chances are very high that you're going to coexist peaceably and lovingly, Christ way. Amen, amen. And how do you think they'll react if you told them that? I think they'll react positively because um, the Bible tells us a slow answer turns away wrath. Mm-hmm. And so if you choose to show love to the, the one who has angered you or wronged you, chances are very high that they will also be drawn closer to you because love attracts love. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. And, uh, and also, Grace, if I yes? were to add on that, if mm-hmm. I were to say a verse that's not in the punchlines, I know it's in the book of Proverbs, not sure exactly where, but it says, if your enemy is hungry, give him something to eat. If thirsty, give him something to drink. And that way you'll heap coals of fire upon his head. Mm-hmm. Wow. Amen. You know, actually, <laughs> um, it's a fact. When people are hungry, you know, a hungry man is an angry man. At times, even food is the answer. Some will just be angry at you because they're hungry, you know. So just just be wise about it. Thank you for that. Salmon, which verse would you go for? I'd say Proverbs 19.11. A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, that's a deep verse. You don't have to really concentrate on everything. Right? That's what the verse says. Some things you can just overlook. Like if someone just steps on your shoe, you can just, just wipe it off. It's nothing big deal, right? Yeah, yeah. you know, like, um, if you do that, if the person is intentionally bothering you, they'll see if it's, if it's of no use because they're not getting bothered. 
you're yeah. living your life. Mm, true, true. Thank you for that. Actually, if you flare uh-huh. up, like, that's the time they decide to do it more and more and more and more. Exactly, exactly. And how do you think you'll, uh, that person will react if you told them that first time? It depends on the person. It depends on the person, uh-huh. You know, people who are not, who don't read the Bible, mm-hmm. it's like an offense to call them pagans because in school they they say I don't go to church mm-hmm. but I'm a Christian. Yeah, I've Christianity seen is mm-hmm. in my heart, that's what they say. Mm-hmm. So okay, some th- those who know the Bible a mm-hmm. bit they they may take it into act, but for some they laugh. Yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. but as long yeah. as you've told them mm-hmm. They have witnessed you telling them. Mm-hmm. They don't have to follow. True. So true. your part is done. Mm-hmm. You've done the Lord's purpose. Mm-hmm. So you leave it to them. Amen. I like that. And as Shemi had said before, you take the first step. So as long as you never take the step, they'll never learn that you're trying to forgive them or you're trying to tell them that this thing hurts me. Thanks for that, someone. Okay. Uh, Grace, uh, you can read for us Mark 11:25 probably give us what your, your thoughts on that. Okay. It says, And when you start praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. You know, this reminds me of the Lord's prayer where it says, you know, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, like it's two-way. You cannot expect God to forgive you if you have not forgiven the person who's wronged you. True, true, true. And, uh, yeah, what goes around comes around, right? Like uh, in Joseph's father's, you know, Jacob. Jacob, he lied. It came back around. Laban also lied to him. You know, Joseph, it is said in the spirit of prophecy that Joseph learned to forgive out of what his uncle, Esau, you remember? Uh, Jacob had stolen the birthright from Esau, but Esau forgave Jacob, and Joseph took a mental note from that. And also later on in life, Jacob, uh, I mean, Joseph had so many wrongs, but every time he went back to God to just pray, ask God for forgiveness, God always forgave him. And that taught Joseph the virtue of forgiveness. Shemigok, do you think that the longer you wait after someone has hurt you, the easier it is going to get for you to forgive them? Well, uh, that's a trick question, but uh, because some people say that they'd rather take some time out, they cool off, then they can go to reconcile or forgive. Others prefer to forgive immediately. I will also, my temperament and how I respond, I'd rather I forgive immediately. Um, when you forgive immediately, it becomes easier for you to begin looking for a solution and an alternative or even reconcile. And there's a difference between forgiveness and reconciliation. I'd say that um, when you forgive, it's because you've asked God to help you so that he can give you the power to be able to forgive. Now, forgiveness is not equal to reconciliation, but forgiveness is equal to love. And so the Mm -hmm. quicker you forgive, then it means that that's an act of love. Mm -hmm. That's a push that comes from the divine power, Mm -hmm. who is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I like that. And um, And then later on, mm -hmm. now you can reconcile. So you you have to forgive first before you You have to forgive. And that's what Joseph Mm -hmm. did. He forgave first, and that is why he would still entertain them. And mm-hmm. tolerate them. By the time he was reconciling with them, mm-hmm. he had already forgiven them. True. Yeah. You can't reconcile with someone who you have not forgiven. Um, the Bible says, can two walk together unless they agree? So you have to be in agreement with the person before you can move on together with them. So this is a question to us and to the audience. You know, just think about this. You know, is this someone in your life who, who has wronged you, who you think they really deserve your forgiveness? Have you forgiven them? Right? And if not, Why? And what are you waiting for? Because you're hurting yourself in the long run. Uh, Shemi Gok, as we almost come to a close the lesson of the lesson, uh, you can uh, read for us Proverbs 19, verse 11. Probably just give us your thoughts on that. Proverbs 19, verse 11, the Bible says, A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. an offense. In other words, when you overlook an offense, you are actually giving God glory. 
when you see when you read um, Acts chapter 17 verse 30 the bible tells us that even god responds in that manner he says that in times of ignorance he overlooks mm. mm -hmm. and so when you choose to overlook an offense then god also is glorified in that manner it's not difficult it's not easy like i'd mentioned earlier it is not something that we can do it by ourselves but when you allow the holy spirit to guide you then it is a divine act and so it is possible for the Holy Spirit to also influence you in that direction. This leads me to the question that I'd like to place on the, uh, to the panelists. That um, looking at um, Joseph's willingness uh, to forgive, what do we learn from it, especially when it comes to understanding uh, the ways of God? Maybe I can ask um, um, Brother Silas to give us an answer on that. What do you think? Given that... Um, Joseph's willingness to forgive, what does it teach us when you look at how God also responds to our lives? In the Lord's prayer, it says that, that we should, we should, God should forgive us as we forgive others. Amen. So, the more you forgive, So yes. I, I think you can also, you know, like Silas, I probably can just help you out with that. Um, probably trying to say that Joseph understood who God was, mm. right? And in his understanding of the character of God and how God forgives us, he also knew that that's what he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that can also add to what Silas was trying yeah. to say in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it, it's, a vindic it's a vindication of God's character. Amen. What about um, his love? Uh, for his family. Maybe I can ask uh, Brother Salmon to give me a thought. Uh, I'm sure he loved his family very much mm -hmm. and he really missed his family. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't trace the roots now that his brothers were there and they had changed. He had nothing more but to forgive, which is what he did. All right. But a question I was wondering if different people did that to him and still came, I'm sure he would have forgiven them because he forgave his brothers because they had changed. So there's a question it was asked earlier, when you're forgiven, should you change? You should definitely change. Amen. These are the fruits of changing. If their brothers hadn't changed, this would have been death situation. Sure, sure. Yeah. I like that. Uh -huh. All right, maybe you can toss it to Teacher Jonan as you conclude to us. Uh, what about God's plan in the mm -hmm. aspect of forgiveness? God's plan. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Ed Grace had said before, uh, in, as we were starting the lesson, you know, Joseph understood God's plan for his life. And you see, when he was reconciling with his brothers, he told them, it is not your fault that you sold me to Egypt. It was God's plan that you sent me to Egypt because in actual sense, Joseph saved his brothers, his whole family when he was in Egypt and essentially the whole world, the known world at the time. You know? So Joseph understood that every single thing that happened in his life, it was God's plan and it was leading him to somewhere to achieve a greater goal in his life. All right. Uh, so we come to the end of our lesson for today uh, but before we leave I'll just uh, give you uh, each of our panelists just like 30 seconds give us what, what's your parting shot we can start with uh, Chamigok alright I think um, what I'd say to our viewers is that um, this lesson is really really interesting it, it is a challenge to us number one from the aspect of the ones who were wrongdoers looking at the siblings to Joseph what I'm learning is that there is an aspect of um, humility that we must come with. The attitude to, be, to reconcile must be there so that the other person can also be motivated to forgive. So when you wrong somebody, be motivated to reconcile and live peaceably with them. Number two, what el there's something else that I'm picking is forgiveness is an act of love. And um, God is love. So the only way we can be able to forgive and forget is when we embrace Jesus Christ truly and when we are converted truly, so that now the evidence of Christ in us is when we choose to forgive our friends, our family, our, and any other person we relate to. May Amen. the Lord bless you.
And Amen. I hope you are going to forgive when you go out there. Amen. Thank you, Chief Migok. Uh, Grace? Well, my parting shot is that <coughs> if we want to be forgiven by God, we must forgive ourselves. And this is, this has been shown in my final quote, which comes from Steps to Christ, page 97. And it says, when we come to ask for mercy and blessing from God, we should have a spirit of love and forgiveness in our hearts. If we expect our own prayers to be heard, we must forgive others in the same manner and to the same extent as we hope to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure when it comes to our sins and God, we want to be forgiven a lot because we mess up all the time, literally. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be forgiven that much as God, we should also be willing to forgive that much. Amen. Amen. To forgive as we want to be forgiven. Salmon, what did you learn from this lesson? I'd say change. Change. Change is really typical. Mm. So change, change, it's, it's a must. We should have yeah. change in our lives. Yes. To be forgiven, mm -hmm. you must change. Mm -hmm. Don't expect forgiveness without changing. Don't ask God for forgiveness. If you haven't changed your intentions. Mm -hmm. yeah. True. We need to change. Thank Often. you for that. Silas, what do you hey, learn? I'd want to say that we learn that we need to forgive others for us to be forgiven. Not that God wants to do butter trade, but so that you understand that you need to forgive someone. Yeah. I like that. You know, the reason why God wants us to forgive others is so that we can understand how much it takes for him also to forgive us. Okay, and uh, so my final closing comment is from our Adventist fundamental beliefs. That's uh, belief number 14. Unity in the body of Christ. You know, every single body has different parts. You know, the body has different parts and they all do different functions. But just because the body parts might not really, they might clash at times, doesn't mean that they stop working. So the same way in church, in the Christian community, we also need to have that unity. And it comes with forgiving each other when we wrong each other. Okay, so thank you all so much for joining us for this second lesson. And uh, we hope you'll be with us in the next lesson, the third lesson, which is I see, I hear, I know. We look forward to having you in our next session. And I would like to ask Salmon to pray with us as we close. Let's pray. Our kind and loving Father, thank you for being with us as we've done the whole lesson and completed it. Please guide us and help the audience to follow us and follow you that you may be known. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen.